I am continuing my lecture series, little mini lecture series on chapter summaries for um, physics. Now I'm using John, Bat no, I'm using Halliday, Resnick, and Walker ninth edition. Uh, this is the calculus-based physics course. Um, so the, the chapters will be a little bit different if you're using a different book, the same idea. So, uh, and and the playlist to all this is down below. And this is just a summary. It's not everything that you need to know. It's just a summary, the chapter summaries. Um, I looked through chapter six. This one's called Force and Motion Two. The last one is about essentially Newton's second law and some of the forces. And so this one, there's really not a lot of new stuff here. It's just practicing problems. Uh, so they start off with friction. And, when, and I actually talked about this in the last uh, example. So if you have a box like that, uh, and I push on it with some force, Fp, then there, there could be a backwards pushing friction force. Uh, then we have the normal force, and then we have the gravitational force like that. Uh, and if this is at rest, then those forces have to add up to, I think my mic's off a little bit, add up to the zero vector. But the thing is, this frictional force, if it's not, if these two surfaces are not sliding, we can find the magnitude of that frictional force as the following. That's the magnitude, the, the direction will be parallel to the surface and in the direction to prevent sliding. It's all about not sliding. So this is, be careful, this is the one thing you have to be careful about. Okay, so that's the magnitude of the friction force. This is the coefficient of static friction that depends on the two types of surfaces interacting, and that's the normal force. So if I push these two, two things harder together, then uh, there'll be a greater frictional force. Uh, if I change the type of material, it could be greater too. But just pushing on this can make a greater frictional force. You know, if this can't be, if you always use the maximum frictional force here, um, if, if it's not the maximum, you usually can't solve for things other than just that's the value of the friction force uh, because it's less than or equal to. Once you get it sliding, then we have a different, uh, I'll call this FFK equals mu K times the normal force. So if, if the two surfaces are sliding relative to each other, then they're, the frictional force is constant. And this is just a model, right? Uh, there are ways you can break this. Um, it doesn't always work, but it works for everything probably that you'll do in this course. Um, so there's a lot of great problems with friction. And, I'm, and like I said in my previous videos, I'm not solving problems here. I'm giving you chapter summaries. I have tons of practice problems, and if there's a question in there that you want me to go over, just put a comment down below, and I'll try to get to it. Um, but that's friction. The next thing is air drag, which is really a complicated force, um, but we can model it. So this book just says it like this, D equals one half rho A C V squared. This gives you the magnitude of the drag force. The drag force is uh, a force on an object uh, moving through the air. I'm gonna try to see if I draw this. So this is moving this way. And so then you have, you know, so you can see the air coming over like that, right? So if you put your hand out, out of a car window and the, the car is moving, you can feel a force pushing on your hand. Uh, that is the drag force. It's the interaction between a moving object and a fluid. It didn't even have to be air. Um, and this again is also a model. Um, this is a model for, uh, we call this uh, low density uh, air. Uh, typically, if it's viscous like an oil, it's usually proportional to the velocity, not the velocity squared. But in this model, uh, one half is one half. That's just a joke. Rho is the density of air or the fluid, and it's around 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter. You don't need to memorize that. I'm just telling you that. A is the cross-sectional area of the object. Right, so if I have a sphere, then this would be uh, a circle, right? Because if you're looking at a, an object that's a sphere, it's a circle. If I have this block moving through the air, then this would be the surface area if it's moving that way. Oh, look at that. Weird. Okay. Uh, C is a drag coefficient. It's a unitless quantity that depends on the shape. And so you'd have to look this up. So I think like a sphere, uh, C equals 0 0.47. I just know that because I've used that a whole bunch of times. 
and then V is the, the velocity. It's actually the velocity relative to the air. So if, if, um, if there's a wind blowing this way and the ball's moving that way, then that would be that, uh, the, the relative velocity to the air. Now, this is actually not the best model for that because, um, I mean, you can calculate the magnitude, but what about the, the vector force? This is one that is not easily done without a computer, but just imagine that I have a ball in the air, a baseball moving with a velocity v. Uh, it has a downward gravitational force, fg. And then what about the what about the drag force? Well, it would be this way, right? It's in the opposite direction of the velocity. I'll call this fd. Now, how could I find that as a vector? Well, you'd have to write it like this. fd is negative one-half rho a c magnitude of the velocity squared v hat. So this is a unit vector. If you haven't seen unit vectors before, <clears throat> a unit vector tells you the direction of a vector, right? So it has a magnitude 1 and no units, but if I include that with that, this says this force is in the opposite direction of the velocity. So the unit vector v would be the velocity vector v divided by the magnitude of the velocity. And then that makes sure that it is a vector and it has a, a magnitude 1. Um, so you could read, write this as negative one-half rho a c. If I put in this for v squared, I get the magnitude of v times the vector v. It's the same thing. Now, the, the problem is that <clears throat> as this moves, the velocity changes direction and magnitude, so the force changes, so it's a non-constant force problem, and really you'd have to solve this with the computer uh, by breaking into small stuff, which is a fun thing, and I have done that before. I think I have a, a, a link a video down below where it goes through how to do this in Python if you want to do that. I, I would do, definitely do that in introductory physics. I think it's a very useful problem. One of the problems that is solvable is terminal velocity. So suppose I have a ball and I drop it. I release it from rest. At that point, the velocity is zero meters per second. That is a vector. So I only have the gravitational force on it, Fg. If I only have the gravitational force on it, then Fg equals ma equals mg. That's the gravitational force. So a is equal to g. In the y direction, that means it's going to accelerate down at negative 9.8 meters per second squared, but that means the velocity increases. So after a short time, we would have this, fg, and then I'd have a drag force. So now I could write, let's just write this in the y direction, f net y is going to be fd minus mg, because that's the y component of the gravitational force, and that's going to be ma. So now a is fd minus mg over m. It's going to be less than 9.8. So it's going to accelerate down, but the acceleration magnitude is going to decrease. Eventually, it will get to the point like this. I'm running out of room, but I'm going to draw it anyway. I have my gravitational force. Eventually, the drag force will equal the gravitational force. And at that point, the acceleration will be zero. So uh, F net Y is going to be FD minus MG equals zero. It's eventually going to stop at the point where this force is, is equal to that force and the net force is zero. So you can actually solve for terminal velocity. Let's put in our value for our expression for FD. I have one half rho a c v squared minus mg, and I want to solve for v, so I'm going to uh, equal zero. So I get one half rho a c v squared equals mg, and then I just have to divide by all that stuff and take the square root. We can do that in one fell swoop. It's going to be 2 mg over rho a c. And that's the velocity, uh, that's the terminal velocity. You know, there's a whole bunch of great problems with terminal velocity. Can you go faster than the terminal velocity? Absolutely. You know, if I throw this down so it's moving faster than the terminal velocity, the drag force will be greater than the weight and it will actually slow down. 
and they'll reach terminal velocity. What if you jump? What if what if you jump so high that the density of the air changes as you move down? Um, that's also possible. That happened in the uh, Red Bull Stratos jump. The uh, Felix Baumgartner went up to I think it's 120,000 feet and jumped out of a balloon. And at that point, the density of air is so low he reached a very very high speed and then entered in low density atmosphere where his he was actually moving faster than terminal velocity so that's that so it's fun the last thing in this chapter is circular motion we already talked about this I already derived circular motion so i don't i think it's just practice with problems um and there's a like i said there's a whole bunch of great problems uh but just remember that if something's moving in a circle there has to be uh one of the one of the ways you can do this is to set your axis like this and call this the r direction and then i can say f net r is m a r if it's moving at a constant speed there's no acceleration this way it's only an acceleration towards the center of the circle so you could have let's say um any number of forces uh moving pushing that way uh let's just call that f let's it's a tension let's say it's a tension t equals M, and then the acceleration of an object moving in a circle is V squared over R, and you can solve for all sorts of problems. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any really new physics that we didn't talk about in the last chapter. It's just practicing a bunch of problems. Okay, so that's chapter six. And again, I have a ton of problems. If you need problems, uh, let me know. I, can, I, can, I probably have a solution to it. I can, I can link it. If you search in my site, you could probably find it too. So... Uh, hope that helps, and I'll talk to you later.